Following the approval of the Iranian constitution occurred by the Kujaj king in 1906, Anglo-Russian rivalry in Iran faded away, if only temporary, and an agreement was concluded between the two great powers. According to the Anglo-Russian Agreement of 1907, Iran was divided into three zones, Russian, British and neutral. In accordance with this agreement, in October 1910, Britain delivered an ultimatum to Iran concerning the security of southern Iran. In doing so, Britain set an example for the Russians to follow. Russian troops had already occupied the northern provinces. In 1911, the Tsar's government presented its own ultimatum to Iran, which amounted to nothing less than an attempt to reduce the north of the country to the status of a semi-dependent colony. Germany established the Intelligence Bureau for the East on the eve of World War I dedicated to promoting and sustaining subversive and nationalist agitations in British India and in the Persian and Egyptian satellite states. The Bureau was involved in intelligence and subversive missions to Persia and Afghanistan to dismantle the Anglo-Russian Entente. The Bureau's operations in Persia were led by Wilhelm Washmush. The Germans hoped to free Persia from British and Russian influence and to further create a wedge between Russia and the British, eventually leading to an invasion of British India by locally organized armies. The Ottoman Empire military strategic goal was to cut off Russian access to hydrocarbon resources around the Caspian Sea. Aligned with the Germans, the Ottoman Empire wanted to undermine the influence of the Entente in this region, but for a very different reason. The Ottoman Minister of War, Enver Pasha, claimed that the Russians could be beaten in the key cities of Persia. It could open the way to Azerbaijan, to Central Asia and into India. Enver Pasha envisioned the extended cooperation between the newly established nationalist states if they were to be removed from the Western influence. This was a pan-Turkish or Tourisian project. His political position was based on the assumption that none of the colonial powers possessed the resources to withstand the strain of world war and to maintain their direct rule of their Asian colonies or Central Asian colonies. In 1914 before the war, the British government had contracted with the Anglo-Persian Oil Company for the supply of oil for the Navy. The Anglo-Persian Oil Company was a proposed path for Enver's project. The British had exclusive rights to work on petroleum deposits throughout the Persian Empire, except for the provinces of Azerbaijan, Gilan, Muzoran, Azabad and Khorasan. The initial reaction by the central state of Iran in regards to the start of the war was the declaration of Iran's neutrality. When a considerable part of the soil of Iran was occupied by the Antique, or the Entente, or the Allied forces, then what is the meaning of neutrality? for Iran. Iran hoped to avoid entanglement in World War I by declaring neutrality, but it ended up as a battleground for the Russians, the Turks and the British forces. When German agents tried to arouse the southern tribes against the British, Britain created the armed force of the southern Persian rifles to protect its interests in southern Iran. Then a group of Iranian nobles led by Nizam or Sultanid Mafi, hoping to escape Anglo-Russian dominance and sympathetic to the German war effort, led Daran, the first of the Qom, and then for Kashemishan, renamed Bakataran after the fall of Muhammad Raza Shah in 1979. The provisional government lasted for the duration of the war, but failed to capture any support from the nationalists, the socialists or even the countrymen. Although Iran proclaimed neutrality in the war, several battles were fought in western Iran between the Russians and the Ottoman forces. These battles destroyed many villages, killing several thousand. Although Iran proclaimed neutrality in the war, several battles were fought in western Iran between the Russian and the Ottoman forces. These battles destroyed many villages, killed several hundred Iranian civilians, and caused near famine conditions that probably caused the deaths of several thousands more. The inability for the Iranian government to protect the country provoked the rebellions on autonomous movements in northern Iran between 1915 and 1921. At the end of the war, because of Russia's preoccupation with its own revolution, Britain was the dominant influence in Tehran. The Foreign Secretary, Lord Kuzon, proposed an agreement under which Britain would provide Iran with a loan and with the advisors for the army and virtually every government department. The Iranian Prime Minister, of course, Alderwell, and two other members of his cabinet have received a large financial inducement from the British and supported the agreement. The Anglo-Persian Agreement of 1919 was widely viewed as establishing a British protectorate over Iran. However, it aroused considerable opposition and the Malajis refused to approve it. Although nationalist movements throughout the colonial world led to the political upheaval in nearly every colony in Central Asia, during World War I and into the interwar period, the decolonization on the scale of Enver Pasha's ambitions was never achieved. However, Enver Pasha continued his ambitions after the partitioning of the Ottoman Empire by the victorious Entente, until his death on the 4th of August 1922 in Azerbaijan by Armenians was preparing to march into Tehran with a guerrilla force of 1,500 Ganges, Armenians and this time Kurds and Azerbaijanis were on their side, reinforced by the Soviet Red Army. But the Soviet forces withdrew in 1921, which helped Britain with its goal of establishing a protectorate over Iran. In that year, a military coup established Reza Khan, a Persian officer of the Persian Caucasus Brigade. Reza Shah curtailed the power of the Majins, effectively turning it into a rubber stamp. 
A Persian envoy in Moscow negotiated a treaty with the Bolsheviks for the removal of Soviet troops from Persia. The coup d'etat in 1921 and the emergency of Reza Khan were assisted by the British government that wished it to halt the Bolsheviks' permeation in Iran, particularly because of the threat it posed to British colonial possessions of India. It was later claimed by the British government that Britain provided ammunition, supplies and paid Reza Shah's troops. However, Reza Shah's later anti-British actions included fighting and deposing the puppets of the British government of Iran, such as Shi'i Khalazil strongly contradicted these claims. The agreement was already dead when in February 1921, Persian Caucasus Brigade officer Reza Khan, in collaboration with the prominent journalists Shadi Zah and Dini Tabusaba, marched into Tehran and seized power, inaugurating a new phase of Iranian modern history. Ruhollah Khomeini, 1979, and the White Revolution, which Caleb would never do, I don't know. Iran, the White Revolution, you know, there we go. But that's the story of Persia, not Iran yet, because this is before World War II and the subsequent name change of these countries or old empires like Mesopotamia, which is Iraq, which, you know, they will go to war with, but, you know, Saddam, you got to stop. I'm twice as big as you and you're going to get your ass kicked, Saddam. Stop, Saddam, stop it, please, please. I'm twice the size of you, twice the population, and just went through a revolution that basically um, basically evolved me to a new form of, um, you know, Shuniism. And I, I forget what it's called, but um, the Saudis are Wasabiism after Wasaba or something like that. And the Persians or the Iranians are Shiites, I believe. So there's an ongoing Cold War in the Middle East between the Saudis and the Persians or the Iranians. So, thanks, Allahu Khomeini. Really did a good job. Anyway, before I bore you with a lot of Cold War aspects and how the Saudis and the Iranians are having a mini Cold War in the Middle East, backing different factions like ISIS and Al Qaeda and whatever, I will leave you. Th I don't know. I need to go and use the bathroom, but we're going to do Iran and we're going to do Iraq. The two sister countries that went to war against each other, and Iraq was basically, you know, destroyed. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. Mesopotamia is next, or depends on who's shorter, but more than likely Iran, Iran is shorter, but I hope you learn something.